Well, moving on, we have course customization, teaching styles and properties with Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you, Brett. Course customization in, in some cases is something that you have to do because we've done it when we've set up your course and you have to make it available or something. But it really allows a, a lot of things to happen and there, and there are two places that you can go to to do those things. So I, I just want to spend a couple minutes on it. It's nothing major. It does have some interesting concepts available that might uh, uh, that you might want to think about. First thing, why customize your course at all? Uh, one reason is to differentiate it from other course sites. And I talk, I say course, and I really mean course sites on Blackboard. Uh, obviously, every course is differentiated because it's a different teacher at a different time in a different room and all that. But sometimes the Blackboard course sites all look the same. And the student doesn't really know where they are. They have to look closely to see which course they're in. So this is a way to easily differentiate your course from course site from other course sites. Another reason to customize is to organize the material uh, so that it, it reflects your course so that it uh, is the, that the menu items and the colors in that are, are what you want in order to focus on what you think is important. Third reason, a lot of faculty want to guide the students and plan their experiences real carefully, what they're going to read, what they're going to do, and, and that kind of thing. And, and this allows you to plan more carefully by designing things in a certain way. And finally, to assist the students. And this is an mm, argument. Uh, how much do we assist the students? How much do we handhold them, some people would say? And how much do we just throw them um, at it and let them figure it out? But to some extent, we've always got office hours and, and email addresses that we give out to the students and, and uh, ways to, that they can contact us for help. So by customizing the course, you can often make it easier for them to get through and to find what they're looking for and all that kind of stuff. There are two primary things that I'm going to talk about. The, the first one are teaching styles. Teaching styles are built in the Blackboard, and by choosing a teaching style, you specify a whole bunch of things in the course. Um, the menu items, and primarily the menu items, but in that same place, you can go through and, and do some other things. So let's talk about the teaching styles that Blackboard has listed. Uh, how do you get to the teaching styles? Well, you start off at the control panel. You go to customization. And, and the only time you used to go to customization, or we would tell people to go to customization, was when they needed to turn on their course, make it available. Um, but here is another menu item called teaching style. And that's what we're going to be talking about for the next few minutes. And I'm going to talk through all this and then I'm going to come back and do a demo. Once you select that teaching style link, you'll come to this page. And this is the teaching style page. And the first thing you're going to do on the teaching style page is select the course structure. And that's what I'm talking about, the menu structure. And it says to keep your existing course menu, continue to the next step. But we're going to talk about all of these choices that you have. And note that this is a scrolling, a scroll bar here. So you can click and scroll down in that. This isn't live, so I can't do it right now. But um, when we get to the live demonstration, I'll scroll, scroll down. But I'm going to take each one of these sections now on the next screen and describe them to you. To get your, your menu structure, they give you five ways of thinking about your course. And if nothing else, this is a good thing to do as you're planning for another semester of teaching your courses. How would you describe your course? 
If the first one is focus on activity, what, what kind of activities do the students do here? Uh, is this activity based? Is this an activity that they're doing primarily? Is it a case study based course? Um, are there, is this really a conference session, a small group and that? Is this a constructivism or constructivist course where the students are creating knowledge in their brain but creating the knowledge system themselves rather than just being um, told what it is. Expedition based. Do they go out on the web or um, library or whatever and, and do things to uh, and then bring back their results and share them with each other? Is it experiential learning? Is that the primary focus of your course to, to uh, um, go in and have the students uh, do some experiential learning in the community, community-based learning, or, or something else. Is it a lab format or a project format? Now, the problem with these activities, or a problem with these activities, is that most courses have lots of components in them. So it really is a, um, a difficult thing for a faculty member, but, but it's worth looking at and saying, well, I'm primarily a constructivist teacher. I want them to do that. or um, this is really a lab course, so let me see what Blackboard says. And, and I'll go through again when we do the demo, each one of these to uh, show you what menus that they come up with. Second way to focus on your course is communication. And again, they, they call this teaching style, and it's, it's how you teach your course. So is it cooperative learning? Are the students teaching each other what's going on? Is it guided discussion? Are you uh, Socrates? Uh, is it social learning? Are they mainly using wikis and blogs and Twitter and whatever? And, and work, I'm sorry, and, and working together as, as, a, uh, as a group and outside the group. I, I think the outside is how social differs from cooperative, but we'll look at that some more. And Web 2.0, are you using lots of the um, mashups in Blackboard? Are you using lots of videos from YouTube and Flickr pictures and that kind of stuff to uh, organize your course as, as an organizing factor? Focus by content is the way Blackboard originally did everything. So they have a number of choices here. You can focus now by chapter, and they'll give you a bunch of or chapters as one of the items rather than course content, and then you put folders for each chapter. Uh, lecture, do you want to have a folder for each lecture? Uh, lessons, um, modules, subject, and, and that's uh, like topics, are there different subjects in the course, uh, units. The science focus really felt, felt out of place the first time I looked at it, so we'll talk about that, especially since um, uh, Dan is here as a science instructor. And then traditional. Traditional is um, just mainly content. We're going to mainly con uh, focus on content in this course or in this Blackboard site. And of course, the course site and the course are not the same unless you're teaching a fully online course. Uh, this focus on systems, I had I hardly looked at. Uh, it's primarily, I think, for people who have come from other systems like Angel, uh, eCollege, WebCT, and they've had their courses over there and they want to continue to use those outlines. Um, and, and uh, since most people he, here at the University of Miami haven't used those since we've been a Blackboard school since uh, 1999, um, they probably won't do us much good, but they're there. Um, we started with Course Info, and that takes me back to 1999 and, and when we started and what the thing looked like. And I love one of these open sources. I don't remember if it's one or two. I really think is nice. One's a Moodle and one, I don't know, I, I don't think it's a Kai, but it's another one. And then the focus on time. The third way of 
organizing your menus to reflect how the course is going to run and what you're going to do on it. Uh, one is a daily and one is a weekly. So you'd have week one, week two, week three. The daily is probably a shorter course um, where you just have a, a, a number of things happening but in, in fairly short order. So that's the, the teaching styles and how we get to it and what choices we'll have. Not necessarily what they do. We'll show you that during the demo. But the course properties is, the, I'm sorry, that was the teaching style. The course properties is the other topic that I wanted to go over. Again, since we haven't really covered all of the choices on that page and what they mean. How do you get to them? Well, you start in your course with the control panel. You go to customization. And, and I must say, I always go to course tools here thinking, oh, this is a tool and I'm an instructor and I want to do something. But the course tools are really the student tools and customization is what you can do with the course. And, and packages and utilities are similar except these are things that package up material and, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, But customization is the one we're going to go to now. Same as we did last time. Remember, teaching style is in there and properties is in there. Okay, So we're going to choose the properties. When you do choose properties, you come to this page. And, and I'm just going to point out that there are sections to this page, beginning with name and description. And number two, classification. And then it goes on down the page. I'm not and I'm going to uh, show you during the demonstration what they all are rather than here. So let's try to fire up uh, screen sharing and let me show you the demonstration. Ooh, just one second. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, uh, Brett, can we get a green check or anybody else if you're able to see my the logon page? Great. Thank you all very much. Um, so I'm going to log in again with my special credentials instead of using our uh, our um, single sign-on. And I want to go to demonstration course. And now I want to go to that properties. So I go down to the control panel. It's open already. I go down to customization. I go to properties. Let's do the properties first, and then we'll go back to the teaching styles. Properties. First thing that you can change, and, and this is different at different schools, but at the University of Miami, we give you the right to change your course name. And we do that because it's so hard for faculty to really um, describe their course or get what's going to happen in their course or the name of the course. Often we've got these special topics or, or just a general name for it. and You'd like to have it be specific, and we don't get the specific one from the student information system. So you're welcome to change this name. Um, so I'm going to have the properties and teaching styles. Now, in this course, you've got a number at the beginning that represents the semester that the course is being taught in. In this case, it's 20148. And if you're wondering, <laughs> this is because of our new SIS system, 
that course is actually coded 2148 in our SAS system, meaning it's 2000, uh, uh, yeah, 2014, the 214 in their system, but we put in the zero so it looks like 2014. And the eight represents the month the course started. Um, I didn't come up with this, and they don't expect to have any starting in October, November, December, or they may have to go to ABC and use uh, base 12 number. <laughs> but anyway, those are those five numbers at the beginning. A lot of faculty like to take those out because I don't want them, I don't want to confuse the students. I just want them to see my course. The problem is when they go to the front page of Blackboard or to the courses tab, they see all the courses that they're enrolled in sorted alphabetically by name. So if you take that 20148 out of there, that course will no longer appear with the other 20148 courses. So I ask you, please leave it there. That's unique to the University of Miami, um, that that's the coding that we use and that that's what happens. Uh, the next is the would be like Math 111 or Biology 121 or whatever it is, just the department and the um, and the uh, number for the course. Then comes the title, welcome to change any way you want, and Fall 2014, a human readable form for the 20148. So. Uh, and, and the problem with the human readable is it doesn't sort well, so that's why we still have to keep the keep the number in front. The course ID is the internal record for the course, not important to you. You can change the description, and it starts off empty. If you want to paste the description, you can. People don't see the description unless they're looking at the course catalog on Blackboard, and they don't do that very much. So um, I don't don't spend a lot of time on that. There's a classification system, and I think ours are all education, higher education, but I'm not even sure of that, and it no longer matters. Blackboard at one time had a system where all the courses in biology, in all the Blackboard systems around the world, would be gathered together, and you'd get news feeds, and you'd communicate with each other. A scholar, it was called, and that disappeared. So the, uh, the classifications aren't, aren't important, and you can't change them. Uh, set available. This is when a course is created by our automated system. That is, the course is created in our student information system. We uh, it, it's fed into Blackboard within five minutes of it being created. The course is not made available. This is new to us. In the past, uh, all courses were created available. And due to a number of features, we're now making them unavailable and so that you can go in and set them up, do what you want to with them, and then make them available when, the, uh, when you're ready to have the students use them. In one of the new versions of Blackboard, and it won't be at least until this winter that we get it on, and maybe the following winter because of timing issues. It isn't out yet, so we're not sure when it's going to come out and all that kind of thing. But in the new versions, there will simply be a link next to the course. The course will have a little padlock. You click on that, and that will make the course available. Because getting faculty, getting anybody to this deep, I mean, it takes three links and scroll down and, and click the button and submit it. But not good. Set course duration, we all use uh, continuous here, but we can actually have dates set for that. Categorize, categorize courses, we don't have categories at this point. Set language pack, some of our foreign um, courses set the whole course to be in Spanish, for example, and all of the menu items and all the prompts and everything else are in Spanish. Uh, and if you set your course that way, that can override. Students can also set this. You can set this uh, in, our, in our system in Blackboard and uh, through your personal properties. But you can do it for a course. And Enforce the Language Pack says if somebody wants everything in French, but you're teaching a Spanish course and you want your course in Spanish, 
enforce the discourses in Spanish, even though they picked French. Course files, we haven't really talked a lot about course files, but we have a content system, and this is where they're stored and all that kind of stuff. So you can uh, um, kind of ignore that for now and submit. So did I, I think I changed, yeah, I changed the title to Properties and Teaching Styles. So I'll go ahead and submit. Wait a second. I get a nice green line up here. Properties have been updated for this course. And, and right over here, I can see Properties and Teaching Styles is the new name of my course. If I go back to the home page or go to Courses, that's the name that will appear. Okay, so those are the properties. The next thing I was going to talk about are the teaching styles. And I've got teaching styles right, right in front of me. Um, I had said that the way to get there was to go to Customization, Teaching Styles. But if you click on this arrow at Customization, you just come up with another menu of these six choices. So here they are, these six choices, exactly like they are down below. So you can choose the menu, or you can go to this page and choose the link. And you're going to get to the same teaching style page. If you remember, I said that the top, it has a number of choices of sections, and the top one is Select Course Structure. It has a whole set of course structures here. It starts off with Existing Menu. That's however it's created right now. And I can click on anything I want, and I haven't selected it until I say Use This Structure. So I can experiment as much as I want. Um, for example, the Constructivism section has Learning Hub, Weekly Planner, Knowledge Base, Share, Reflect, Chat, Groups, Course Overview, My Coach, My Grades, Tools, and Help. That doesn't look like a typical course. It doesn't look like course content and faculty information and all that. But it reflects a different model of learning. And it's actually described here under this constructivism. In a constructivist course, you facilitate the learning process while students develop knowledge to create complex and critical theories. Students can collaborate in groups, which is over here, share, which is up here, in the knowledge base, and reflect individually. Constructivism assumes that the students are going to process the information through reflection. Reflection is probably a, uh, a blog or a journal, um, and, and each one of these will be attached to a certain type of tool or a certain function that might be valuable. So I encourage you sometime to take a look at what these choices are. So I'm going to grab this and pull it down a little and look at, oh, where was, oh. Focus by content. Um, some of these are just obvious. By module, I clicked on, and it says modules, study teams, resources, and, and other choices. And, and of course, once you make this, you can modify it any way you want. So it, it, it just is a thought, well, does this fit what I'm teaching? A good opportunity to think about that. Um, the science focused goes to units. Research and tips, because research is so important. There's an experiment journal, discoveries, I think a, uh, a um, journal or a, a blog for writing down discoveries, a lab wiki. Ooh, just one second. <laughs> To save energy, my lights go out if I don't move over to that side of the room every, I don't know, 30 minutes. So it really is very effective because it normally forces me to stand up and walk over there. I can slide back and wiggle my hands, but it gets me out of my desk on a regular basis. So I haven't complained about it. I think it's a neat feature. Unless I'm online and you're looking at my picture and all of a sudden everything goes black and my eye faces lit up way too much. So back into the science focus thing. Terminology, it has a, 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 a 
a, a form, a system for you to put in terms and, and for those then be linked in other cases, methods. My instructor goes away to the bottom because it's the experiment, it's all that stuff that they want to focus on, my grades, tools, and help. So a, a very different uh, focus from just the module and all that stuff. The traditional um, home page, course information, my instructor, content, assignments, pretty what, what people who have gone back into the old days of course info and grown up with Blackboard are, are normally used to doing. Um, I did want to show one of these. That's it. Open source one. And it looks like Moodle, it says. I, my experience with Moodle is very limited. It's an open source, uh, free LMS system, though Blackboard now hosts it and uh, makes it easy for people to, uh, to set it up and run it because they can manage it for you for a fee. Um, so latest news, recent activity, my grades, instructor alerts. And, and I look at these and I say, whoa, how did they do these nice sections? I don't know. But if I select it, <laughs> it will add all those to my course and I can go ahead and look and, and see what they're doing and then modify them or use them if I'd like to have those sec section titles. Um, open Source 2 is, is pretty much a straight, oh, this is Sakai, the Sakai page, page of what it looks like. And then the daily and the weekly, um, you know, what, what are you up to here? This is use the daily course structure for st short training sessions or when materials need to be presented in a set amount of time. And remember, um, in, in one sense, I'm talking about Blackboard with your official university courses, but there are also times that people use Blackboard for other type events. Um, a, a training day that they're going to have with their faculty on some new feature, something like that. So this might be a way of, uh, or a week that they're going to spend uh, building their uh, vision of the department or whatever. So this might be a useful down and something like that. So that's part one, select the course structure. Um, I'll go ahead and select that open source one because I like that one. Now, should I include the content examples for open source one? Sure. This is not going to erase anything I've got in the course. The course remains the way it was, and all of these items are added to the menu. So I'm able to uh, mess around with it, see what I like, delete it if I want to. I'll have to delete it step by step, but at least I could do that. So let's go down to part two. Oh, where would you like the course entry point to be? When somebody comes to your course, what would you like them to see? And by default, there are these five because these five are, were in my course menu. Um, I, one of the things that, that many courses are doing now is changing to a module page for their front page instead of announcements. So you just select that page here and, uh, and that would be where people come. Uh, select the course theme. Themes are color uh, in, in background selections. So um, citrus, coral, you can see some of these are very bright um, and uh, it would certainly differentiate your course, sorry. Uh, it would certainly differentiate your course, but it, it it's one of these things like walking outside here in Miami these days, I, I think I want to cover up my eyes because it's so bright. And with some of these, I feel the same way. Um, I, I think our default one is way down here at the bottom. History. I think we're using the history one because I kind of like the brown and those colors. But um, that's just the default. You can go in here and change anything. And, and by the way, you can just change the theme without changing anything else. So you could say, oh, I'm teaching a biology course. So I'm going to use the medicine. And I like the blue and white, and that will differentiate me. And um, and everything's set up for me. All the you know what's highlighted and whether it's a white font or black font and all that kind of stuff. I think that there was actually since Dan is here, 
didn't we have, oh, these are all just colors. And then it comes down to subjects. So here is biology, chemistry, and design. So they have a choice. I'll go ahead and select that. And my course will turn into a biology course as far as the design is concerned. The main menu style, do you want text or buttons? I always recommend text because buttons truncate things. You can only have so many letters on a, on a button. Originally, Blackboard only had buttons, but then they added text. And I prefer text because it'll wrap around. It'll do things like that. But you can do it as you want. The text color is now brown. It used to be green. Well, when I chose the biology theme, the text color change to brown. I can change it. I can make it something else if I want. But with that one click, it did all that. Default content view. You know, when you go into a folder and there's an icon and a title, you get to decide if only the icon should be shown. I don't recommend that because it's confusing, I think. Whether the, only the title should be shown or whether the icon and the title, the text, should be shown. And we default to uh, icon and text. And you can change it and then apply it to all existing content if you'd like. And here, there's the opportunity to select a banner. The banner appears on the entry page to your course. Um, there are recommendations. I think if I hit Browse, no, that doesn't do it. Um, and I guess on this page, it isn't there. Uh, there's another place you can select the banner. And it tells you what the size should be and things like that for those of you that have experience with design. I'm not going to select the banner for this course. So I'm going to submit it. Remember, I changed to biology um, using a Moodle model, Moodle type menus. And we'll see what happens. You have chosen to add a course structure to your course. Continue. Note that it doesn't replace my course structure. It adds it. I'm still going to have the menus that I had. It's applying changes right now. It reminds me the course is unavailable to students because I changed it. <laughs> I had made this one by hand and it said it to be available. So this is. The biology theme has been applied. Click the theme icon to choose a new theme for the course. What is that talking about? Well, right here is another way of changing the theme. So you don't have to go into the customization. If you just want to play with themes, here are, uh, it's hard to do because of these, <laughs> these uh, menus that disappear if you're not hovering over them. So if I wanted to say, oh, I wanted to do America. What does America look like? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know that I like that. So let's go back to uh, biology, which was down under subjects. So I'll go back to that. Now, some things. You'll also note the open source one course structure was added. Um, well, that's interesting. So it doesn't do what it looked like it did, where it, these things were um, um, were right justified and all that kind of stuff. It just makes them headings. And, and we use a structure where we don't put headings in, but we put the bars in. And, and it, you can do as you want. So this is a way of, of modifying things, renaming the link. But I guess it doesn't go anywhere because it doesn't. It isn't a link. So if I want to stick with all this, I can go down and remove all these things down at the bottom with a little action menu and delete. Or I can leave everything the way it, the way it was by deleting all these things. Once you change a, a style, it's going to take some work to put it back the way it was. But since they're separated, it can be done. 
Now, this blue stuff looks real strange, but if I go to student view, and this is a, a building block that the University of Miami has added, and it will st soon be part of Blackboard apparently, or a very similar one. Um, I guess this blue one remains. The stuff, all the stuff over here doesn't, and this remains blue. I'm not sure why. Uh, this button allows me to pop the course menu into a separate window and expand things and see what's, oh, this is the content that they made. The library support has stuff in it. Blackboard help has some stuff in it. So I can uh, um, expand the menu and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's all that's there. I can uh, oh, return to teacher view and then back where I was. Uh, before I leave the demonstration, if any, um, if anyone wants me to show something <laughs> specific, let me know. Uh, one of the, Michael mentioned that the student preview building block is standard in the April release uh, or service back 16, um, which we are likely to go to next winter break when we do our annual upgrade of Blackboard. Um, so this will change and I think it will turn into an icon at that point. This is a, an external building block and, and one of the problems with the one that we've got with the student view is I just went to student view. If I now go down to the control panel and look at users and groups and look at users, you will see a user called BB Demos. Da -da -da -da. And you can remove that person if you'd like. And until you do, their grades will affect your averages and anything else. So once you go into our student view, that student stays there. On the new Blackboard one, every time you come out of student view, it says, do you want to remove this student? Do you want, you know, we made a demo student, do you want them removed automatically, saving you this process? So Blackboard solution is better than the one we've got, but uh, we'll let you create a student. The beauty of this and Blackboard's, if you leave it, is you can take tests, you can then go out and, and uh, check your grade and go to this teacher view and do some stuff and then come back to the student view and, and check some other things out and, and uh, try to take a test again and see what happens and all of that. So uh, if you want to continue to act as the same student with what you've done before, leave that student in there. If you want that student out of there so that everything is just your real students. Uh, right now we have to manually remove the student, but uh, the April release, which is Service Pack 16, we're on Service Pack 14 for people here at the University of Miami. Um, and there was no Service Pack 15. <laughs> and Blackboard doesn't like the name Service Pack, so they're now talking about release. Um, and uh, and instead of talking about Service Pack 16, they're now do, uh, doing the April release. And Michael again, uh, points out in the chat that 15 and 16 were combined in the sense that any Service Pack is a combination of everything that came before. And that's true. So, uh, but it may be that we'll be going to the fall release this winter, which will even have bigger and better things to learn. So since I don't see anything in the chat window or any hands raised, I'm going to see if I can turn off screen sharing and go back to my slide, my demonstration slide, and flip over to the end of my, um, my presentation. Brett? Thanks, Bill. Well, everyone, please join us next week uh, where Michael and Bill will be uh, presenting. Michael will be uh, presenting setting up a grade scale in Blackboard, and Bill will be presenting on using a Blackboard wiki within Blackboard Learn. So thank you for joining us, everyone, and uh, have a good week. I think we've got a couple of people typing, so let's not kick them out immediately. Oh, I'm not kicking anyone out. I'm just turning the recording okay. off. Yeah. <laughs>